Hey everyone, welcome back to the She Interviews. I'm very excited to be here with uh, my friend Christy Moreland today, my very old friend Christy. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for having me, Jess. Yes. Uh, and Christy is actually coming to us all the way from North Dakota. I'm in New Jersey, North Dakota. Um, and uh, we just recently reconnected over. Wait, actually, no, I was going to say over social media. That is not true. I actually called Christy out of the blue on her cell phone, which is like unheard of now nowadays, right? We don't call people on, on the phone anymore. <laughs> I think I answered too, so it was- You did was answer. <laughs> was I still in your phone? Yes. The contacts transferred over. <laughs> oh, okay. So no, not for any special reason, just because like transferring over contacts. No, of course. Okay, so Christy is a, a newish mom. You have little kids, right? How, how old are your kids? Almost a year and a half and three. Year and a half and three. Okay, wow. So mm -hmm. that's like in the thick of crazy town as a new mom. And yeah. you're also a career woman. Correct. Christy, so the reason Christy and I know each other, I, I used to live in North Dakota and uh, Christy and I were coworkers. And uh, Christy, you were like fresh out of college, right? Yeah, I just graduated. I think you were the you were my first job right out of college. Jessica called me and is the reason I moved to North Dakota. So thanks, <laughs> From Minnesota, guys, okay? It's not like yeah. I plucked her out of like the Big Apple or something. She was in Minnesota, just like, <laughs> right next door. But um, one of the things that impressed me so much about Christy just coming out of college was her like her social skill level. Uh, you know, we, we brought her into a, a sales position and she was just a natural with uh, making relationships and natu natural business builder. So it was a really great time working with Christy and uh, we just became friends and now we're reconnecting. How many years later? 10. 10 years later, we're reconnecting. Uh, we both have kids and, you know, I thought it would be appropriate for her to come and tell her story because she's had some interesting things happen along her journey uh, to becoming a mom. And um, so so why don't you, Christy, first of all, tell us a little bit about life right now. What do you do for a living? And um, what kind of lifestyle are you living as far as like the work and mom balance goes? Sure. I'm, I'm honestly trying to figure that out daily at the moment, um, as I think a lot of us working moms are. Yeah. Um, but as far as a career, I work for an IT company. Um, and I've had held several different roles with that company, I think from enterprise sales to um, marketing, branding is where my focus is really now at the moment. Um, but with my with the company I work for, I can wear, wear multiple different hats as well. So that's really nice. Um, I do have two little ones at home and with uh, COVID, um, the hit of that, I've had to bring them home with me at certain points in time. So back in March, actually, we sold our house and we moved into a two bedroom apartment as we were building at that point. And so I, I wasn't expecting to be in a two bedroom apartment with two little ones, third floor, um, and not be able to go out at that really at that point. But yeah. I brought them home with me during that time for six weeks. And now they're, they're back at daycare, but through that journey over the last couple of months, I've had to pull them home a couple other times too because we've had cases at daycare. They've had to get tested twice now. Um, it's it's been very interesting juggling, you know, conference calls and little ones um, at the same time. So it's yeah, like I said, it's a daily daily transition. And even this week, I've had had um, times where I've had to keep them home just because of COVID as well, actually. Right. So are you getting understanding from your company or how's that? How's the communication with your workflow and your company going because of the kids? Sure. So we're a global organization. And prior to COVID happening really in the U.S., we were following it globally as well. So back in February, we all uh, spent a couple of days working from home to make sure it was we were able to do that. Cause before that point, I actually worked at the office every day. I didn't work from home. Um, but so we did practice that, but they've been extremely understanding. Um, they've been letting me be very flexible. I work odd hours sometimes as well. So I'll be online from eight to midnight at certain points just to get things done or right away in the morning at four or 5 a.m. before they wow. wake up. Um, but I've, I've been very fortunate um, that they've been all extremely understanding. 
That's fantastic. Yeah. So, so let's back up. Cause I mean, I think everyone's kind of in this shit storm with COVID of like figuring out how to work from home and take care of kids and all of that. Yeah. But let's talk about before, like prior to COVID yeah. you were pregnant with your first kid and you're already in the thick of your career with this company, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So when you found out that you were pregnant, what, what was going on with you? Like, did you guys plan it? Yes. Yep. So we planned it. So we got married and right away after we got married, we knew we wanted to have, start having children. So we did plan it. Um, at that point, my, my role was really enterprise sales and I needed to travel throughout the country. Um, my clients aren't in North Dakota. We don't have any clients really in the Midwest. Majority of them are East Coast, West Coast. Um, even conferences, we had to travel to those as well. So my role and my discussions with my leadership team definitely shifted when I found out I was pregnant because those are things that I knew personally, I didn't want to do as much anymore. And occasion, I'm happy to travel. Um, but for me personally, I wanted to be home with my children growing up. My husband also works um, sometimes odd hours. And so I'm the, the primary parent as far as drop off and pick up, because um, I'll never know exactly when he'll, when he'll be home. Okay, so when you, found out that you were pregnant and you were playing this role in your company, you, you already knew that you wanted to be home with the kids. Yes. Yeah. Well, at least at night, like I knew, obviously I wanted to keep my career going, but I knew I needed to do a shift. I needed to, to move to a different role with inside the company. Um, or at least take a little bit of a, a step back per se, as far as being present on on those um, those meetings, but maybe being behind the scenes or making it all virtual as we're seeing now. Okay, so how was that decision making process? Was it pretty simple for you to make? Was it kind of did did you have any apprehension in talking to your company about the fact that you needed a change because of your you know coming lifestyle? Sure. So it was I, I, back at that point, I, it was scary, right? Like, you know, it's making that change or going to your leadership team and, and letting them even know you're pregnant was intimidating, especially with the um, in an IT industry. It's mostly a male dominated field. So all my leadership team is male. Um, so having those conversations, um, it, I thought it would be more difficult than it was. Um, I found that just being really open and honest with them. And by that point, I built my rapport with the company. I worked really hard. I was working a lot of hours. So they were they were extremely understanding and they wanted to do what they could to make it work out. Yeah, 100 percent. You've all you had already established your your value that you add it to the to the team. Yes. Yeah. So, OK, so it was it was intimidating, which I think a lot of women can relate to that. Right. Like, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, I'm in the midst of building my career. I'm in the midst of uh, branding myself, you know, making my mark. And now I have to start preparing for something that's going to happen in my life that is going to change the course that I'm on with my career. Correct. Yeah. And I didn't want it to hinder my career in any way either, because I still wanted to grow within the organization and my career. I didn't want to necessarily take a complete pause and say, no, I don't want to go any farther. Okay. Do you, um, are there, so you mostly male dominated feel, you have some uh, female coworkers? I do. Correct. And are they moms? They are. Um, they're all, well, majority of the individuals, moms that I work with are older. So okay. their kids are in high, or high school or, or college. I'm the only one currently with the little ones. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So you really had to, you're really like the only one in that boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. So you got the change and was now, did they just make um, accommodations or you actually changed your role? So at that point, I changed my role into account management. So I'd still go visit with clients on occasion, but it'd be very much scheduled. Um, it wasn't just, hey, you need to fly here on Friday. Um, it was definitely a more scheduled approach to it. Okay. So, okay. So you were still traveling and how did that go when you traveled? Like who took care of the kids? Who did the pick up and drop off? Yeah. So that, that has been interesting. Um, so none of our family live here. So I live in Fargo, North Dakota. We have family that lives maybe an hour and a half away is the closest. So anytime I've had to travel, we definitely have to make those arrangements prior to, or my husband at certain times has been obviously had to stay home or adjust his hours as well 
for those those scheduled meetings and times. Yeah, you definitely need to have an understanding spouse, right? Yeah. yeah. When uh, I think one of the things that women struggle with sometimes is they want to keep their career, um, but sometimes their spouses can make or break that decision, right? They could either be very supportive. Or if they're unsupportive, if you make that decision and that's what you want to do, you can feel very guilty. So mm -hmm. it sounds like you have your husband was you guys were like working together on the solution. Yes, yes. We and we're one of that we have the calendar written down saying, okay, I have a meeting. I'm gonna be gone this week in October. We need to figure out what we're gonna do to plan around that. That's fantastic. So at any point in this journey, right? Like you're you're still you're still traveling. You're gonna you're having to like plan this stuff out ahead of time. Where before you're able to to you know leave on a whim. Um, how how was the the feeling of that? Like, did you ever feel like was it hard? Where you ever felt like, man, maybe I should just be staying home? Like, did you ever have any doubts after you you made the decision and then you started implementing this decision, right? To mm -hmm. to keep working. But were there any points that were challenging where you started to doubt if you made the right decision? Not, not necessarily on my, in my career, in the role change. I did have a guilt or the mom guilt that a lot of moms feel about bringing their child to daycare. Yeah, that's what I'm talking the, about. Like, yeah, yeah. So finding the right facility or the individuals you trust. And, and I'm, I'm very lucky now. Um, first six months, I wasn't really crazy about the place where I was sending my, my child. Right. But now I'm really happy with the teachers and the, the curriculum that they have. And I feel, I feel okay sending them there. Yeah. You still get that mom guilt sometimes, especially when they don't want to let go of you and they're crying as they're going. But when they're happy, <laughs> Happy when you pick them up, it's okay. So, okay, yeah, I, I I can relate to what you're saying. I think that uh, sometimes we want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? Like we're like, okay, I want to keep my career, and then we think that we pick out the best place for our kids to go, and there's some anxiety around it. Like it's really not the the we don't realize that it's not the best place. We just think that okay, I should just be home. Yeah. But in, but you didn't jump to that. You're like, I'm gonna I'm gonna course correct. And I'm going to start looking at some other solutions where yeah. I'm able. Yeah. And the same thing happened to us. Like we, we were using a daycare facility and um, I wasn't crazy about it, but my mind wasn't like, I mean, a little bit, I was like, oh, we should find a different facility to put the kids in, but more in my brain, like more of the mom guilt was wearing on me. Like, oh, you know, this is not working out because I'm not doing the right thing. This is mm -hmm. not working out because I should be home. So that was like, that's why I was asking you that question because that's what I went through. And then, but then when we found our nanny um, mm -hmm. and everything, you know, was a lot better, it, I, that mom guilt start to, started to go away because I felt like my kids were in a safe place. They were happy and all of that. So it wasn't necessarily me that necessarily had to be there. <laughs> I like just felt it wasn't necessarily me that had to be there. It was um, the fact that I, what I didn't realize that I was trying to accomplish was just making sure that my kids were happy and safe while I, to, to let me have the headspace to go do what I had to do. Correct. Everything. Yeah. Yep. You nailed it. So that was, that was my biggest concern right away was that is someone going to take care of your child as much as well as you are, right? Do you feel right. like you trust them and they're safe in that, that location? Right. A hundred percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now how long ago was that, that you changed your role? Are you still in the same role now? I am not, I'm currently in transition right now. Um, so I'm more working um, towards marketing and, and branding and evangelism um, going forward with my organization. Got it, okay. Mm -hmm. And did this role, the switch, this transition that you're in right now have anything to do with home life and the kids or just more of your career? More of my career, and I was asked as far as um, from the organizational leadership team asked me if that would be something I'd be interested in, in doing and jumping into. Um, I still have meetings and, and speak with my clients and even prospects on occasion as well. But this allows me to use kind of that more creative side of things. Okay, I love it. So basically, I like just to kind of sum up what we've learned about your uh, transition into motherhood you you made a decision you knew you wanted to keep your career you were bold enough to go to the leadership team and say this is what's happening this like i want to stay but this is what i need your account I, i'll say accommodations were met and then the second phase was getting the right child care so that both you you had reassurance that the kids felt 
safe and happy. And then that allowed you to feel, have the mind space to go ahead and have your career and, and keep working. Right. Correct. Okay. Correct. That's not very easy for many women. So that's why I just, I wanted to do a little, a little recap there that like you just were thoughtful about it and did a little course correcting, but you figured it out. Yeah. Yes. It, it wasn't easy at, at all. Right. Like there were certain nights that I'd sit up thinking about it or days you feel extremely guilty over it. You know, like I said, it's that, that mom guilt that we all have or not, you know, not everyone, but um getting over, you know, getting over the mom guilt and finding that um, the positive side of it, what works best for, how do I see my kids being happy going forward? Um, they want their mom to be happy as well. I want to feel successful. Um, they, they can look up to that as far as a role model, what I can provide for the, ch the children as well. So did you ever feel like your identity was being challenged? Like, who am I with, with that mom guilt? Like, who am I? Should I be working full time? Should I be at home? Like, did you ever go through that kind of push and pull? I did. Yeah, I did on occasion. Um, I think in the back of my mind, though, I always knew um, for what, what I want in life and where my goals are and where I see myself in 10 years that in order to get to those that location um, or that goal, um, I needed to stay on my career path. So what you just said is integral for some moms to hear um, that are having a difficult time with making decisions once the kids get here. Mm -hmm. You just said, I knew what my goals were, right? Like you you know what you want to achieve. So I think that if you, if you, you have to know that before you're able to make that decision. Otherwise, you're going to keep flip flopping. I'm going to stay home. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to stay at home. I'm going to work. But but you you knew what your goals were, and you just had to make sure that everything was in harmony so that you can keep pursuing those goals. Correct. Yeah, I love that. So, moms that are listening, if you're having if you're struggling in this area, do a little soul searching and sit down and really define what you want. And most likely you're going to need to have a conversation with your partner about that, right? Because I'm sure you've had many conversations with your husband about what you want to accomplish mm -hmm. and all that, right? And it's okay for those goals to change. You know, yeah. I could say my goals when I first had my son are different a little bit now. They've shifted. Um, my journey's changed unexpectedly over the last couple of years. So my goals have changed. And, yeah. and but that's all, but it's always a conversation, Correct. right? Yeah. How, are, how have they changed? You know, I think, so um, a couple of years ago in 2018, my mom got extremely ill. Yeah. Um, and during that period or course of time, um, I spent 15 weeks down in the hospital with her, um, literally by her bedside because we didn't think she was going to make it. Um, and I realized, you know, the value of time and how precious time really is, you know, it, it's, it, time's a big thing, right? Like you get time for, to, there's time to heal, there's, there's, you know, sometimes time is fast, sometimes time is slow. Um, and I, I found that during that process, what my core values are and what I find extremely important have changed. Um, you know, I've become you know, I, I don't know if it happens with age as well, but more empathetic to certain situations as well. Um, and how I want to spend my, my time, because we never know, have, have shifted. Yeah, absolutely. Can you tell us more about that? Because I did want to ask you about your journey with, with your mom, mm -hmm. because uh, you said that was a real turning point for you. So it was this, yeah. this affected how you looked at life and also what you wanted out of life and how you wanted to live it, right? Correct. Putting things in a different kind of perspective. So your mom got sick. And then um, how did that not? I mean, yes. How did that affect you emotionally? But also how did it affect you with your just what how you were existing on a daily a daily basis? Sure. So um, again, back in it was 2018, my son was not quite a year and a half at that point. I was expecting to be gone with my mom for two weeks while she was in a, having some pretty serious surgery. Um, and she's going to have recovery after that. But I was expecting to be down with her in Minneapolis area in the hospital for about two weeks. Um, but unexpectedly, she ended up having two additional surgeries after that. Um, one of them, um, 
well, two of them were actually both rapid response. One of them, um, the nurse actually froze uh, when she was in the room with her. Um, and I, I asked the nurse multiple times to call rapid response and she, she couldn't, she froze. Like literally so I, was just frozen in mm -hmm. fear of what she was seeing. Yes. So I um, took off running down the hospital <laughs> into the hallway and yelled rapid response because I've, I've read on the walls. You, anyone can call rapid response. It doesn't have to be just the nurse. Um, anyways, she came out of that. And um, well, when, once, I guess, sorry, let's take a step back here for a second. So when the rapid response was called, um, they rushed her right into to surgery as yeah. well. And when she, the next morning, um, I spent the night there at the hospital by myself. Um, I was... Uh, I was very independent at the time. I didn't need anyone else there. I, I got this under control. But they, they, um, the next morning when the doctor came, he asked me to go into a, one of those small rooms like you see on, on television, right? And yeah. he gave me the news that he didn't think she would make it and I should call family and that the next couple days were critical, right? So they weren't planning on waking her up. She was in the ICU. So um, I called family um, and they came. Um, and it was really difficult. Um, the first couple of days, she was in a lot of, we didn't, she didn't wake up, obviously. Um, but and even a week later, they actually, the ICU team told us that she, that she wasn't going to make it, that they wanted to put her on comfort care. Right. Um, and so we were saying our goodbyes, and we asked if she'd ever wake up again, and they said they didn't know. Um, well, literally, that night um, when she went on comfort care, all of a sudden in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. she woke up, she looked around the room, she smiled at everyone and asked, you know, where are you? Where's all the little beds? Like, <laughs> where, where, you know, um, but she was just uh, on medication at that point, pain medication, everything else was shut off. All the other IV poles, you know, she had, I don't know, 10 different things going at all times. Everything was, was shut off, she was on comfort care. They didn't think that, like I said, she'd make it a couple of days at that point even. A um, couple of days later, she she did end up, um, she was still she was still going. And they were planning her hospice facility because um, one thing with her insurance, she couldn't go home. She had to go to a hospice facility. So definitely look into what your insurance allows you to do. Right. Um, so we were planning the hospice facility, but for some reason she was, she was still alive and they couldn't, that didn't make any sense to them. And they actually called in experts from the University of Minnesota to, to look at her case and, and talk to her. Um, because again, the doctors, there was one doctor on the team that was trying to push for her to move forward and keep fighting. Um, but the other doctors said there's no chance. Well, the doctor from the University of Minnesota came and he said even if she did continue to fight, she had a 10% chance of survival. Wow. Um, and what, what is he, he asked the question, which I don't think you should ever ask anyone in that mental, <laughs> mental state, but what do you really have to fight for? Your kids are all grown, you know, you've had a good life. Do you really want to put yourself through this? And at me sitting there next to her as an advocate when she's, you know, can't really talk for herself, shifted, shifted my mindset. In the end, she decided she wanted to fight um and, and keep going and so they started antibiotics again they were going to do additional surgeries but they went in for surgery and all of a sudden they didn't have to um there's a lot of things behind it but she is she's truly a miracle but during that process i i did spend 15 weeks um sitting by her bedside because again I, i've lost trust um in certain team members right um and my husband was extremely supportive during that time, but he was three hours away with our son. So he would drive back and forth um, on the weekend so I could see my son. But um, those times have memories even for him still, like he was a year and a half, but we can still drive into a parking garage and he says, we're going to see grandma. Um, oh, yeah. You know, it's interesting with what they remember those little eyes, right? Absolutely. But during that time, I got <laughs> shifted my mindset as far as, um, like what, how valuable time is, um, everyone needs an advocate, plan ahead before you get to that situation. My mom was in the ICU and she didn't have, you know, a living will at that point. We were talking about it the day before she went in, you know, does she, you know, they, they were giving you the paperwork to fill out and we were thinking, oh, we don't need this. Don't worry about it. And so then we end up doing it real quickly in the ICU, which makes no no sense. So I can make decisions on her behalf. 
Right. Um, but yeah, so again, I just, that was kind of a ramble, but it all really shifted my mindset as far as what um, value can we provide to others and how can we support others um, and even and be there for uh, be there for each other. Cause you never really know what someone else is going through. Right, right. So like not taking things for granted, mm -hmm. like we can, we can spend so much time planning and finding out what our, what our, figuring out what our goals and dreams are. And then it just takes something just like that to be, to snap you into a completely different mindset about life. So how is this experience? Uh, first of all, thank you so much for sharing that story with all of us. Um, mm -hmm. And it's an amazing story. Um, how is, how has it changed the way that you operate on a daily basis with, career and uh, family? I get in the car now and I drive to daycare, I drive to work and it feels so good. Um, before, you know, you're like, just I would go about my life and I would be so busy and be like, I would, things would be a pain or I'd stub my toe and I'd be thinking it's the end of the world. <laughs> Maybe not yeah. that drastic. Um, but um, yeah, I think it just, it's made me slow down a little bit appreciate those those little times together um mm -hmm. i still have a problem internally with worry i worry all the time um and i know that's me to to look at and reflect and you know i know i can't be in all places at once um but you yeah. worry in general you worry about your mom you worry about your I worry kids about my mom i worry about health and others but yeah yeah i mean that's understandable right? Mm -hmm. Because you know what it feels like to all of a sudden have the bottom drop out. Yeah, exactly. Well, then, you know, you want to, and I have all, all respect for the medical field, right? A complete respect. Um, and you want to have trust in them. But I, I felt like I lost that at certain points. And so that's, of course, that's something I'm trying to gain and get back. Yeah, that's understandable. That's understandable. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, yeah, I mean, listen, I, I love, your story it's beautiful and i um i love the fact that you were able to share with us what you went through um you know becoming a mom and then after you became a mom and how how you had all the, that shift and then a major thing happened in your life that also helped to to shift your mindset what kind of advice could you give to women that are in a, a similar situation like their their kids are still really little and they they want to keep their career but they're unsure of if it's the right thing to do and how to go about it there's no um there's no one decision that fits everyone right everyone has their own path to take and their own journey what's maybe been best for me isn't going to be best for you either, right? It's really just takes a lot of reflection. And again, I think it just can shift and it can change throughout the process, right? So right now I'm, I'm moving forward with my career. I love it. I love working. I love having my children with me and being there when they, when they need me. Um, but you know, nothing's, I can't say that's going to be forever, you know, maybe five years from now, my, my mind might shift and I say, I want to be home with my kids full time. What, what am I doing now to prepare for that, that point as well? Yeah, I love that. Go on, go easy on yourself, basically. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, like for me, it was the end of the world. What, whether I stayed home or whether I kept working, it was the end of the world because I was so afraid to make the wrong decision. So, mm -hmm. um, but I love it. And, and um, what else? Any other like closing remarks before we go? Um, anything that we should share of anything that we missed that I didn't ask you about? <laughs> I think I think you cover a lot there, Jess. Um, I guess the only thing I, I would say is we don't like to think about it, but I would really encourage everyone to think about who their advocate is. Should we get into a situation that we don't expect? Right. And making sure that individual or individuals know what your wishes are. So you can speak on their behalf and it's okay for those, those, what you want to happen or what your wishes are to change, you know, but at least starting that process and um, you shouldn't have to worry about that when someone's, you know, not going to make it in, in, in that, that situation. So I guess that would be the one thing is I would just encourage everyone to 
to think, think ahead. You think about your finances a lot. We plan for retirement, but also planning for the unexpected. A hundred percent. I think mostly what you're talking about is getting a will done. And yeah. a lot of times people, that's actually part of the thing that I help people with is helping mm -hmm. them get a, an affordable will. Mm -hmm. And as young parents, it's like the last thing that we think of in, unless something happens, then we start thinking about it. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's, I think that's great advice. You know, you had to have something happen to you to spark you thinking about these things, but in your experience, you're telling people, don't wait for something to happen. Like be prepared ahead of time. Cause you just yeah. never know what tomorrow is going to bring. Right. Correct. Yeah. Or a healthcare directive or something along those lines. You just want to have, have those in, in place. Again, no one wants to think about it. But at least it's done. It's behind you. You can always adjust it going forward if, if you want to. 100%. Yeah. Chrissy, thank you so much for sharing your story and part of your mom journey with us. I love it. And I love you. And um, yeah, yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. We will see you next time on the Sheet Interviews. Thanks for having me, Jess.